Welcome to the Tribute Lounge. I'm Shane Johnson, and today I'm with this backcountry sniper, <laughs> Mikey Cicerelli. All right, everybody, I'm really stoked to finally get Mikey on the show. Now, you guys are in town. We've, we've interviewed a couple of the other homies on this uh, secret project, but uh, for starters, why don't you let us know why you're here in Nelson? Yeah, so I've been out here, Baldface Valhalla, was nice enough to host us, Torstein. Horgmo has this insane vision where he's brought Charles Beckinsale into the mountains, building some of the biggest jumps I think I've ever seen. And uh, it's looking like it's going to line up for a, a good weekend here. We've just been kind of just hoping for the, the right weather window, and it's yeah. looking like it's coming. So. And the crew is Tor, Cocard? Br yep, Brand Cocard, Mons Roisland, Lynn, Brandon Davis. Uh, we've got Tim Manning filming, yes. uh, Craig yeah. Gallus on the other cam, Gab, who films Natural Selection, FPV. He's an absolute beast. And then Celia. Tor's wife is shooting photos, so we got pretty... She's a ripping snowboarder, and Yeah, too, she was like, a pro snowboarder so herself. <laughs> it's a really good crew. Yeah. Everybody's got the... What I like is a very common energy, and, like, everyone's really fired up to, to make it happen. Yeah, the consensus when I've talked with everybody about this project, too, it's everyone brings something really unique to the group, mm -hmm. but I could just see you guys leveling each other up. Like, Tor goes, then you go, then, you know, like, I could just yeah, see that happening. Yeah, Cocard's just got the send in him. He's just like, need a speed check? He's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, I love it. And <laughs> then, like, so Mons awesome. has the, obviously, like, coming off X Games, bronze, big air, and slope style. He's just like... He's dialed. Yeah, and yeah. you're coming off NST, mm -hmm. and we can we can definitely talk about the first bracket yep. because your second run, dude, was eight, just so freaking smooth. Oh, thank you. And you know, I had money on you. I'm not gonna lie. So <laughs> I was pretty damn happy that. You, sorry, Blake, but it's you gotta know, do it for Canada. Yeah, gotta do it for Canada yeah. and other. Re yeah, I was just stoked. I was stoked. But that was a really clean run. How much of that did you guys had multi days to scope that? We got to be do a one day scope where we actually got to go on hill on course. We kind of just were up more on the ridge and then looking underneath. And the rad thing about NST is they provide us with like so much intel of like drone footage, yes, course photos so and stuff. Good. So I kind of that was my line from the beginning. I was like, that's exactly what I wanted to do and been working on the visualization. So I was able to like just try to like. I don't know if you noticed, I kept doing like the th where I like would shred with my fingers, just trying to like, because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, if I'm like, if I'm having fun on my board, I know I'll, I'll ride well. So I was just trying to keep it like light and like enjoy it. Because it's got to be tough. Like mm -hmm. some of you guys are up top for a while before yeah. you get to drop mm -hmm. in. So I can see the nerves being a thing yeah. and just, uh, you know, keeping it together. I was, dude, I was so stoked for you. Thank you. You and Nils, I kept saying, were like the dark horses. I'm like, you watch, both those boys are gonna, they're gonna make their way in. So it was great we to see. We wanted it, you know? Yeah. It's good. No, it was so great to see. Um, no, I appreciate that. You know, the, the we're filming right now, we're still in March. So the results will, I think we're, Morrison, we're two weeks away or a week and a half away from watching it. Something, Something like that. A April week? 4th. It's a week, yeah. April, April 4th. Yeah. So um, by the time this airs, maybe we'll know, maybe <laughs> we won't. Who knows? But um, yeah, just stoked for you there. And then each time I bring someone on, I'll deep dive their video parts the night before. Last night we were with the R&D crew, which was super fun. Yeah, what an event. Uh, wow, those yeah. girls. Robin, again, Robin, just your yeah, vision was incredible. Yeah, kudos to her for putting that on for those women. Like, makes them elevate to this next level and just giving them that platform. I was really excited to see I'd love to see, to see 16 gals, 16 guys to in NST. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah. You got to be your first time on stage <laughs> as a... What would you call that? A they, trophy think, bearer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did Robin call us? The, <laughs> the rock, rock star, star boys. The rock star energy boys. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we presented the trophies. It was quite fun. It was pretty rad. And actually. like being there, like I had spoken with Tim Manning because, you know, legendary filmer in our industry and his love for the sport and now sharing that to his daughter. To see his daughter win? I was like, he was crying. I was getting emotional. I was like, this is <laughs> special. Yeah. I know. No, that was wild. It was, that was a great night. So... Needless to say, I went through Mikey's parts this morning because we were up late last night hanging mm. with the crew. Um, and that's, you know, from, from start to now, 
I think my highlight was ARC. Your part in ARC, the cinematography is incredible. Your kit choice <laughs> is so standout because the blue base against the peach. Yeah. I mean, just again, kudos for that choice, dude. That film, like the way it would film was so amazing. But that to me was that really, that, I called you the backcountry sniper because just every landing was just like, mm, Oh, mm. thank you. That whole, so we'll put that one down below. It's a must watch. Just so you have some context once we get into mm -hmm. certain product things with Mikey. That, dude. That's a fun one. That, that was, was really that's good. the standout part for me, for sure. And legend Gabe Langlois well, on the film. He homie makes, I grew he, up with, so He it's makes like, snowboarding look really good. Yeah, I was, I mean, when Danny Davis hits you up to do a project, you're honored. Oh, so I was like blown away even just to be in it. And kind of, we had a good winner. We had a good crew as me. Yeah. A lot of uh, rents and, uh, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of rents and solars and I and like kind of out there. Yeah, it was memorable. I think my maybe one of my favorite shots I'd say is the front five. I think off um, Hollywood there. Yeah, dude, it's it's just that was fun. And kudos, Gabe. It's filmed so well. Yeah, but he you're killed riding, it. That's when I really. I mean, I was I followed your career long time since Olympics, but that was like okay. Uh -huh. Like Mikey is Mikey is on the level. Mikey has more than arrived type thing. So it <laughs> was, it's, it was really good to see. And that's where I want to get into too. You also went to Chile with Solars and we had Solars on and we we got into Step On, but Fawcett and I go, we go pretty deep on Step On coming from the perspective of, you know, we love bank slaloms, we love carving. We The rippable, yeah. You know, and, and the fulcrum point to this system and how we, how it engages really elevated my carving. It was yeah. really cool. But I want to know from a freestyle standpoint, and I know a lot of people do, mm -hmm. you know, what were your choices of boots? You rode this exclusively when you were in Chile, yeah. right? So we did this last summer, Mark and I kind of like last minute, we booked our flights, I think a week in advance, just kind of saw the storm coming, but pitched it to Burton. We're like, hey, let's do a full step on trip. Like I'd never done it. I know Mark hadn't. I was like, let's just see how we ride for yeah, the whole yeah, yeah. trip. and. I actually, what I found was that I switched from the Ion Boa to the Photon because it's softer. And I just yeah, felt the Ion like- Ion Boa is stiff. It's very stiff. Great for like ripping carves and like charging. But for me, I like to tweak my grabs and like- How do you throw a me method? Yeah, it's a, it's a little like too stiff. So I, I was like, I'm gonna make sure these boots are as soft as I possibly can. And I think that actually helped with the maneuverability where like, you know, I'd look at the shots and be like, that melon tweak is exactly the same as it would be with straps. So it was like a good proof of concept that I, I think for, if you're looking to be a freestyle rider with step-ons, go for the softer boot. Yeah, I even went to actually this boot here, the Yeah, this, this one might even be softer than- It is softer. Yeah, because it's, it's got the articulating cuff. I do that drop knee thing too when I'm in <laughs> posy posy a bit like yeah. Craig used to. So I, yeah, I want a little bit of that lateral movement in this. this yeah, this, this a lot, yeah, having that looser boot for sure. And it was fun, it was like, I think I even said it in the, one of the clips where I was like, I didn't, at the end of the trip, I just, it was normal. I was like, it didn't, it didn't feel that's like so I was, cool. yeah. And I think that's the the thing, you gotta just commit to it. And then me and Solars were going back and forth. I'm like, do we just keep riding them? And like, you go back and forth, but I think they are like, kudos to the R&D team at Burton for like stepping it up and trying to make this rival, you know, the straps, like I still, Still think it's got some movement to do where, yeah, I just think the way it rolls maybe could be mm -hmm. could be a bit better, but Absolutely. I was I was definitely impressed with, like we were hitting proper step downs, jumps, doing sevens, flips, like everything. Oh yeah, watch the footage. I mean, it was, that yeah, it was a really fun trip. Really, we really got good. really lucky with conditions, but, and in powder the whole time, didn't have any issues. It was cool. It was a good, like, yeah, like I said, proof of concept, like you can really use this mm -hmm. setup anywhere yeah. and next year there's going to be an est version which i'm coming, really which stoked is, about so i'm curious to see how many of the pros then start to transfer to that well, now that it's because totally. a lot of you guys do ride est right you're yeah, EST always in your straps yeah yeah but i really do think the est for step on is going to elevate it because just your pull point from when you're on your board that's why i yeah. love est so much is that you feel that board feels so well exactly, man, and yeah. sometimes with the reflex yeah just maybe coming from the EST, it feels different. Yeah. And you can lock in too, like with EST on these ones, especially I push my foot like all the way forwards because I'd rather have toe drag than, than heel. heel drag. Absolutely. And it's a little hard to do that with the 
like with the reflex. So true enough. Yeah, you yeah. do get that. It so like stability. You're yeah, right. you can slide that EST Be channel forward. back a little and bit then forward. You're, yeah, because what I yeah then you you're having that same platform on your board as you're used to of the straps. I think that was the only difference that I just yeah. That's and it's really, like really call, small. No, that's a good good concept. What size are your feet? Nine. So okay. Yeah. So that's, yeah, lucky. Nice and the hometown size. hero you usually ride. Are you riding a wide? Are you riding a standard? Standard one sixty. Yeah. 160. 160, yeah, I used to ride, it's funny, when I was competing in slope style, I rode a 155, and then as soon as I started riding backcountry, I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna 160, absolutely love it. Now my park board's a 58. Yeah. It's just, I just. Mikey, I, I like this. I kind I've of, been encouraging I, people to ride bigger totally. boards, man. I kind this of is... preach it to people, I'm like, it's easier to land, you got more, you know, Dude, base underneath it. you. Yep. Sure, it's your swing weight, it's, it changes, but I, I believe that you're gonna be able to be a it's just an easier ride, the yeah. bigger board. Yeah, intermediate to advanced, mm -hmm. it's giving you more contact too. Exactly. So if you're on a groomer, there's more contact, more yeah. stability. Yeah, totally. It's that simple. Yeah, people shouldn't be afraid to get into that elevated. No, and I did that video too on my little channel about like, hey, don't be afraid to size up. And I got so many comments of like, should I get the bigger size? I'm like, if, if you can't go demo it, because yeah. I, you know, maybe not for everybody, but I, I think it helped my riding a lot. Yeah, Even upstairs I'm trying to demo longer boards to people yeah. too. And it's I, I agree with you. It'll elevate everybody's riding. It just really like will. The, just chunder becomes easier, landing becomes going fast isn't as scary because you have this yeah, you have more of a base underneath. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's you touched on another thing. Subscribe to Mikey's channel. It's pretty rad. <laughs> oh, it's, it's pretty rad. We're trying. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's good, dude. What you and Solars are doing, I yeah. was like I'm, I'm just happy to see more good people in our space, and it's like oh man, Solars yeah. is absolutely he's a good role model too. This is good. Yeah, yeah he's, he's really good. Really good. Yeah. yeah. So we touched on the hometown hero. Yep. We know that that's that's what Mikey was riding at NST. Did yeah. you did you swap up boards at all, or you were like this? I, I know this one no, is tried and true. For I'm sure. I'm not messing around. Yeah, just because I have so much familiarity with this board, I just wanted to be like, okay, I'm just not even thinking about it. Other riders like to switch up their boards while we're in the contest, but for me, like, I'd be going and riding this board in the park and doing all the jumps at Black Park with That's it. Awesome. And then I go and ride it in like powder, just so I, there's no second guessing it. I just wanna know, I, I yeah. know this board. Like, and you're, you're fairly center, you're probably- Yeah, I push. A I'm two inches, two inch setback. Two inch setback, yeah. So I, and that's the cool thing with EST is that I push my stance quite forward so that I make the board a little bit more twin yeah. than it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, which is good. Just, you know, I like to ride switch and try to land switch. Well, so. and you said something else we should talk about because it's, I know a lot of riders and I do this too, I really try to torque. Mm -hmm. Torque your tail on the apex of a turn, yes. right? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So explain that to people that aren't really thinking about using your feet independently on your snowboard. A lot of people are just turning with their yeah. upper body. You know, how how can you get some torque? I know you do it on takeoffs. For sure. It helps you propel into yeah. whatever spin. I mean, I think it too, like I run a little bit of forward lean so that like I'm really engaged in my bindings. Both bindings forward Both lean? Both bindings. Equal? Equal F2 on uh, and yeah. a tip that I, Mickle showed me, I, he rotates his high backs, now I do that. Yes, I've been doing yeah. that for the last like three years. And what are your angles? Uh, I'm going 12 up front and then minus five. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so not like, cause like I said, I still So Mikey's landed switch on minus five. Like, yeah. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, you don't need it. No, this no. minus 15 stuff, we, that's another <laughs> thing I'm trying to get people off I mean, I swear as time. I get older, I'm sure that that's gonna get to like zero eventually. So when Mikey's yeah. my age, she'll probably be like me, posi nine, and then thirty up front. Are you then, nine on the posi nine on the back? It's everything circumstantial. If yeah. we're going night riding on groomers at Salmo, which yeah. we do this all the time, then yeah, I'll go posi posi like literally thirty, mm -hmm. posi nine, tighten the stance up to like twenty one, and then just hammer, you know what's right? a a fun one that if anyone wants to try it, I'll go set up like my hometown hero or a fish or a very directional board, but I'll set it up regular and you go, cause I'm goofy, but yeah. then you just try to like That's do the whole really day and it's, you're so switched because you can't go the other way. Yeah. And it's really fun cause it tricks your brain where you start forgetting that you're goofy. 
That's a good one. We've got some demo fishes upstairs. You should I'll, try I'll it. Make, yeah, I'll make some of the team guys especially. Just go like, out on a slushy day yeah. and, and set it up your other opposite stance. Oh, it's just such You'd good be training too. For sure. For your... You start opening your hips the other way, yeah. seeing the mountain a little differently. It's, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's smart. And, and how wide are you usually? Uh, 22, 22 inches. Yeah, always. A little less, um, like maybe at 21.7, but kind of right there. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I always get a little bit narrower for POW sometimes for yeah. that compression. And then, you know, if it's, a, I know it's hard groomers, I widen a little, but. Uh. But yeah, like you were saying with the tail thing, I just like, I feel like my favorite riders, I see them use their tail so much. And that's something I've been trying to learn is like using it as a damper, you know, and like using mm -hmm. it through chunder and kind of like through the shitty snow, you can kind of really like, there's so much control that comes from your tail of your board. And I'm really learning that more, I feel like. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah no, th there's been a lot of chatter with everybody about that stuff. Yeah. And the longer your board gets, often it's going to be for a heavier rider, so it's going to be stiffer. Yeah. You know, that's a little stiffer than the 55 you used to ride, of course, For right? sure, yeah. So that manipulation gets mm -hmm. different, but if you widen your stance, you can get that torque a bit better, yeah, exactly, too. Yeah, so. exactly, yeah. I know, that's definitely something I'm into is the that longer, but not crazy stiff, because I'm a small person. You small dude, but I really yeah. like the length, but I don't need the stiffness. So like this board rides perfect for that where it's kind of right in the happy medium where I'm not looping out when I, you know, hit a jump, but I'm actually able to like charge through anything. Yeah. 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 Well, that, cool. I mean, that second run at NST <laughs> is proof in the pudding, dude. Like you really, it's just, again, sniper, like your landings were so good. Thanks. Everything was so damn smooth because you're, you're trying to impress the judges and it's, it's this weird stacked concept where you've mm -hmm. got to... You know, Blake. Blake was ahead of you for so sure, and he a, right, and he doesn't fall. He well, rides just and so crazy smooth, smooth. So and smooth, then bring, yeah. so you got to bring that smoothness too. Yeah. And then it's all about the feeling and the impression as mm -hmm. well as what you're doing. So, yeah. kudos again, dude. Like I oh, mean, that thanks. that run was that run was killer. Yeah. Um, so getting into some other stuff, we've got young team riders. Mm -hmm. um, one guy in particular super looks up to you, dude. It's uh, you know, and and I want to those guys watch the show a lot. I want to mm -hmm. kind of talk about. You know, what helped you along the way? What were things in your riding career, so mm -hmm. to speak, that, you know, helped you get to that next level? Each time, you know, leveling yeah, up totally. to, dude, you're, you're in natural selection. Yeah, like you're, it's nuts. Yeah. You know, the Olympics is one thing, but for the snowboard community, NST mm -hmm. is a really Oh, for me, I put that uh, on the top, top As tier yeah. compared to all the other, like, accolades or, you know, events in snowboarding. But I'd say... The biggest one is surround yourself with a good crew and like motivate. You did that this year, man. Yeah. Oh my god. And like, and for the younger generation too is like just like, you know, have a couple buddies that are out there trying to progress and having fun. You know, it's like if you can have that camaraderie within your group, it's just going to elevate your riding. And like you can do that with coaching programs. Like I was lucky enough to be coached by Sam Marcotte through the senders. Uh, like you were out in Ontario. I was in on Ontario yep. exactly. Elliot Catton was my coach as well. Um, and that, yeah, those guys are some of the best of the best. So we had such a good crew of riders and it just kind of helped me get to that next level. And he was very influential in like, Hey, let's go ride the mountain. Let's go focus on style. He's like, I'm going to go shoot photos today. Like I don't Pull care. Pull you out of the park every once in yeah, a while. So you're totally. And I rode half pipe too, which was yeah. a big one. I think, um, if you have the chance, even like, I mean, here at Whitewater, just ripping those side hits, like. I listened to the podcast there with Jody, with Devin, and Devin said the f one thing he said on the thing. He's like, get out of the park and ride the mountain more. That's cool. Yeah. And I took that and made it a point. Definitely the last three years. Like, I ride the park still, obviously, to get my tricks dialed, but I put more days in just riding around the mountain. Board control. Board control. Yeah. You learn how to, like, oh, that weird little bump. Now I can figure out how to 540 off of it. Or I can crippler. Or I can, like... Yeah, hit that be, switch yeah, and yeah. I'm seeing the like the crew that you have riding around Whitewater like that will make you an incredible rider because you're just adapting it's more of like quick not so much yeah. so like everything's changing and that a lot of time in backcountry snowboarding it's always different so I think that's like right there go rip side hits go try to do your tricks on these weird uncommon hits that maybe aren't like perfectly shaped exactly because then you get to the mountains and that natural hit becomes easier. Just, yeah. Yeah. And you have to be able to find them, right? You mm -hmm. have to have the experience totally. to find that stuff. No, yeah. That's really cool. So what brought you to Whistler eventually? So I got on the national team when I was 16. 
And then I moved out to Whistler 18 just because that was kind of the base for the slope style team. And being from Ontario is like Whistler is like Excellent. the holy grail. Yep. Um, so I was more than thrilled to move out there and kind of introduce myself to like, yeah, some of the biggest jumps I've ever had in the park at Black Home, but then just riding around the mountain, which was really cool. And in a weird way, like I always thought to myself that I would transition out of competitive snowboarding into filming. It's just like kind of like at one point I just called up the team and I was like, I, I, I'm i going to quit. Like it's just not my uh, my path. The national I, team. Yeah, yeah just because yeah. I wasn't having as much fun. I just wasn't enjoying it and I didn't ever want to like tarnish my relationship with snowboarding because of results or like to chase the Olympics and all this kind of stuff. No, I feel that man. For and sure. it was tough. Yeah. Like my mom was like, you're, you're really just giving this up. And I'm like, I'm not giving this up. I'm going to change my path, you know? And it was, uh, and I think in a weird way, it's like me doing that. I think hope I, hopefully then it shows other riders that are like, Hey, yeah, you can, get your skills in the park, get dialed in, but then go use those skills elsewhere because... There's a trailblazer yeah, who did told, that. Man. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, Craig CK was the, was exactly. the first, yep. first to do that. And I think there's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of young Canadian snowboarders on the come up right now. But I, I do think it's important, the stepping stones you made, you know, that's why your, your bag of tricks and your board control and mm -hmm. the way you now attack a backcountry yeah. event or just free riding like yeah. your part in arc, you know, that it shows. It shows mm -hmm. so those stepping stones are there. Whistler Park is it's legit. It's, if yeah, you're so, you know, if you if that is your base for a while, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna elevate your game. Totally. You're, they're, you're watching dudes all day long that <laughs> for just sure. crush. Yeah, and like massive, massive jumps. But yeah, so I'd say that for sure. Fundamentals get just dialed as much as you can yeah, and just yeah, yeah. like love it. I literally like still like we're just so focused on on getting better and I don't know, I, I love it so much. Oh, very, very awesome, lucky man. to do it. That's awesome. So you get to Whistler, what sponsors did you have by the time you were there? Were you already backed by Burton? I was backed by yeah. Burton. So Burton's been rad where they started supporting me when I was 15. And cool story about that is it was actually uh, Mark McMorris that got me on the team. No way. Yeah, he saw me riding in New Zealand and then was like, hey, what's your deal? Like, who are you with? What's at the same time I was riding GNU boards and O'Neill outerwear. And then he basically was like, I want, you should get on Burton. And then like that, yeah. that's summer leading into the winter. He was like, boom, signed with Burton. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, and at that time, Mark was my f all time favorite rider. Yeah. He was three years older than me. So he just won double gold at X Games. Like it was so surreal that, and it's really rad that he, um, he did that for me, you know, he didn't have to, he just saw something in me. So oh, that's cool. I didn't so know then that I, that's Yeah, I did, so then I pulled that into, yeah, I've been with Burton for th this week, 13 years now. So how long were you with him before you filmed with Light for that movie? For, oh, with Tor. Yeah. Yeah, so that would have been, that was my first actual introduction to like backcountry filming. Mm -hmm. Tor was so rad. He was like, hey, you want to come out to Bald Face? This was like the initial kind of proof of concept that Charles and them were doing. And then now this is the extension of it, what we're doing here now. Cool. But uh, yeah, I always remember being very intimidated. It was like Ika Backstrom, Wernie, <laughs> Jamie Anderson. Um, and I was yeah, just I like, when they were yeah. Here. And I was yeah. like, okay, this is, yeah. this is it right now. And yeah, I ended up having a good session. And I think that changed it for me when I was at that. That was 2019. Yeah, so you had already been with Burton for a little while yeah. at that yeah, point. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, right on, yeah. man. And then, so now Whistler, Whistler's still home base. Whistler's still home base, yeah. Very cool. So mm -hmm. summertime, we'll get into a little bit of this because the, the season sorry, is tailoring off here yeah. and we're getting to the end. What's Mikey up to in the summers? What are you doing? Are you cross training? Are you skating yeah. a ton? Skateboarding a lot. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep those skateboard. I'm like, uh, funny with skateboarding is like, as I get older, I have friends that are stopping to do it. And I'm just like trying to keep my skateboarding ability there because it is so fun. Like, I'll go to the park. And in a weird way, I'm like always trying to like, yeah, get better on my snowboard. But sometimes doing skateboarding can help that. Like, I'll try to almost mimic like doing runs on my skateboard to try to get into like a flow state in a yeah, way Mikey, at totally. the skate park yeah, yeah, cool. and just do that over and over again. A lot of golf too. That's my Sick, man. my yeah. big passion. Um, yeah. So that's the summer. And then I'm up on the glacier coaching at Momentum Camps. Good. Yeah. Oh, so the cool. ski camp yeah. now, 
has snowboarding. I've been coaching there for the last four years. Oh, yeah, it's really See, fun. that's awesome, too, to yeah. be a part of the community in another aspect that brought you into it. You know exactly. I mean? So it's... And another knows, fun, dude, like, fun story about that is um, when I went to COC when I was 13... Mark Solers was my coach. Like he got, <laughs> like basically right. you would show up to the orientation and then they'd be like, all right, you're with this group, this group got lucky enough to be with Mark. And then, you know, 10 years later, I'm filming with them. So I, yeah. and, and I'm like, this is insane. And then my way, I'm like, probably one of these kids I'm coaching on the Glacier might be filming with me in 10 years. You never know. Yeah. So I, I love being able to like give back and like, well, you're good at seeing it too. You called, you know, yeah. you told me about one of my young guys yeah. too. You were like, that dude's crushing. And I yeah. know he's, he's, he's riding incredible. But no, uh, so it's fun to be yeah. able to, because for so more of my career has been obviously focused on my progression and like my arc through, through snowboarding, but it's fun to like put it onto somebody else that you're like, whoa, this is like yeah. sharing that same feeling that I got when I learned a back three or backflip and then getting to give that to somebody. It's, Pretty rad. So oh, I'll be doing cool. more of that, and then yeah, hopefully, either New Zealand or Chile, wherever uh, the snow looks better. I think we'll be, you guys nailed Chile yeah. last year. Like, I think we're going to be on the similar program of good. like oh, just like cool. looking at the forecast. Okay, it's lining up. Let's go. Because you're doing some R and D too. You're going to be testing out new things that for sure. We'll, probably I, releasing we'll be, down the yeah. Line we'll be on the EST yeah. step ons and yeah all the new outerwear, new boards and stuff like that. Nice, so right on. We skipped by a couple other things. Well, not one important yeah. part is your boots. What boots are you riding when you're in your strap bindings? I'm going ion boas. Ion boas when you're yeah. Because you get the yes. strap movement, so you've got your yeah, yeah lateral mobility there. That makes sense. I do like like my boots are pretty like worked in. I've only been wearing one pair of boots the whole winter. Just like and I've probably put maybe what? 80 days riding so far. So I do like to have that boot that's like, I don't know, just for tweaks. Yeah, I like talking about this stuff yeah. because I, I know some and of my pals like, keep that a little loose up top too. I can't, so I, got, I crank mine crank? as yeah. like, it's literally like that when I'm riding and then same with the bottom. And what I like about the BOA more than the speed zone is that your foot like wideness gets shrunk. I just feel like the boots profile with the BOAs are more narrow. And I and yeah, I just want it seems to encompass the foot a bit. Yeah, better, just for you sure. just can yeah. really get it. And I like looking down and having everything just tight. Yeah. Are you a guy that's just cranking? Oh yeah. Cranking, cranking, cranking again before yeah, you go. Yeah. Like, like I'm just like okay, go go go. And that's what I like about that with the boa because you just get the that ease of like yeah you're like oh I want a little tighter a little looser I. Yeah. Rarely ever go a little looser. I'm yeah. like cranking it more and, and more. Cartel X CST. Yep, Cartel X, and they got the nice like heel hammock there. Which yeah, is that sick. that engages with the back of the boot, grabs it, so oh, it's you're like so no locked heel in. movement. You are yeah, locked. Yeah, totally. No, that was a really good. Design. I really like that. And at first, I actually was, I rode Malvita, and I was worried these that the you know high backs were too stiff for me. But I got really really liked them after. Just kind of like just changes your board feel. Like you can just rip with those. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And another sponsor you have, and this this kind of takes a little bit of a left turn, but mm -hmm. goggles. Yeah. You know, I just, Ashbury, like Jason Bros. Yeah, a, such a good just dude. Wicked company. Um, I, I like talking about goggles because mm -hmm. I always tell people to the two most important things you buy, I've said it on the show lots, <laughs> are your boots and your goggles. Yeah, Because if either of those are not performing, <laughs> totally. You're, it's not a good day, man. It's not a good day. So, which Ashbury model are you wearing? So, I wear just the Blackbird, like the original frame and it's like what we were talking about earlier on the show is like they're an affordable goggle that yeah. get the job done which i really love and kind of back that about ashbury what jason's doing is because they don't have to be expensive and i think it should be like a a thing an easy thing for people to get you know totally at least right. that's my opinion so I, the I, goggle game is crazy you can yeah, be up to 500 dollars totally, goggles now yeah so and, it's yeah it's been good to see for us too mm -hmm. it, it gets more people Involved with product that's still totally killer. For sure. But I mean, I, I the goggles I rode in NST were tried and true. The Blackbird originals all the way. Like yeah. in there, yeah, I think they're a hundred Canadian, maybe retail, maybe even less. Yeah. I think they're on sale right lenses. now for like ninety. Get yeah. your lenses right, yeah, and which like, is key. And then mm -hmm. have extra lenses, mm -hmm. and that way, yeah, if you're dropping a hundred bucks on a goggle, you <laughs> can afford a couple extra lenses, totally, yeah. and now your kit's styled. Yeah, right? for so, sure. 
Cool. You have, do you get into um, split boarding much? Do much of that? Or you're, I'm, I'm a, you're yeah. still focused on, on where yeah. you are? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, we do a lot of like snowmobile, like ski do access um, filming. And I'm sure later on in my career, I'll maybe yeah. switch on to something like that. We'll, but... we'll drag you out to Kootenai Pass. Yeah, this, exactly. Uh, Lightning Strike Cabin is epic yeah. up there, dude. We'll, we'll do one of those. Mm -hmm. But I was bringing that up because yeah. we had a lot of success with the step on I, yeah, I haven't got a chance system. to try it, was, it it's cool man it, it just was... seems like it the transitions just seem a bit quicker yeah. they're more dialed in yeah and for for the ascent it's it's pretty rad so yeah, yeah you'll eventually be oh for this. sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure mikey <laughs> well um we've been asking we just had all the r d girls here and we mm. we went through like a question period that was super fun and i'm a big music guy i like asking questions like this your next video part, you get to pick any song you've ever wanted. Doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, I instantly will say uh, Balance by Future Islands. Sick, I've had Sick. a Future Islands part before, and uh, yep. I'm, uh, that is like my all-time favorite band. It's a, it's a song that I've like listened to a lot. It gets me into the zone and everything. So if I can ever have a part to that, that song, that would be like, I'd be like crying watching it yeah. for sure. <laughs> He's a singer with just crazy passion. I've seen them live twice. Yeah, I've, this, I think I've done four live shows. Yeah, he's like, he does, he's slapping his face, he's crying, he's putting well, it he's all He's an Italian there. bro too, isn't he, he? He must be. I think he is, yeah, yeah he but be. he's <laughs> unreal. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's a really good pick, dude. Yeah. That's one of my top 10 bands. No, no way. Question. Oh yeah, Yeah, I love dude, I am like a super fan of that. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. Well, bro, I mean, I appreciate it so much. This has been a great talk, you know, good little gear dive, yeah. and uh, I want to have you on again. So Just, yeah, let's talk Let me know next gear. time you're through. I can't yeah. wait to see the movie, what these guys are going to be putting yeah, out Bots next year. Yeah, will be releasing the video in the fall, and yeah, it's going to be cool. We already, like, the Japan segment lined up. We got some clips already from here, so. Yeah. And then everything with NST, man, following you through that has yeah. just been so wicked, Mikey. So Thank congrats you. on everything you've done in I snowboarding so far, it. man. And I'm a big fan, dude. I look forward to just keep, Thanks, Shane. keep watching it. Appreciate Love it. Love it. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, you know, I got to say it one more time. Most of you aren't subscribed. It is what it is. <laughs> but uh, it sure helps us. Subscribe to his damn channel, too, because it's also awesome. We're supported by Cole. We're supported by Baldface. Uh, we are now supported by Nelson Brewing Company. Uh, stoke the fire. Morrison, who else? Wh who else are we missing? Sponsored by mom. Sponsored mom. by our, you know, sponsored by our moms. Yeah, big time. We all anyway, are. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we all are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. We'll see you soon.